Hi there, welcome to QA Box Let's Test and this video we are going to learn how to connect Node.js with Microsoft SQL Server. The SQL Server is running on my local host and the name of the instance is SQL Express. In this I have created a database. The name of the database is Node-MSQL and in that we have this table Users. I'm going to make use of a server login and the name is Sample and the password is also Sample. Now to access data from this table, I can run this query select all from users. So this is going to give me all the users. I can also filter out the users based on this where clause. So then I'm going to see the specific record. I've also created an SP which takes in an input parameter. So the name of the input parameter is ID. So you pass in that ID and you see that respective value. Now to establish the connection between Node.js and Microsoft SQL Server, we have to download a package. And the name of the package is MS SQL. And to install that, all you have to say is npm install MS SQL. Now, this offers the support for async await, promises, and callback. So, we are going to see all three different versions. And at the end, we are also going to create an API. So, from the API, we are going to fetch the, the users from Microsoft SQL uh, Server. All right, so let's get started. This is the code file I'm going to work on. So I have to first import the package. So I've imported the package and stored that in this constant SQL. And this is my configuration file. So I have to mention server. And this is basically the instance. And I have used this backward slash to escape this particular one. Okay. You can also pass in the instance uh, under this options and then. In here you just pass in localhost or whatever your server is right so in my case it is running on port number 1433 which is a default port and here are the user and name and password database is this before we start writing code for async await promise and callback we first try to handle error and we handle error using sql dot on and in here we first pass in the event and the event would be error and then we pass in the callback. So anytime error is being raised, so what do we want to do? So we just want to, let's say in here, we have to pass in the callback. And basically this is the listener, which is listening for the error. So we just write the callback, which has this argument error. And we simply log out uh, error.message onto the console. So let's start with the sync and await. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to have the try and catch. It's always a good practice uh, when you're working with external sources to have this try and catch blocks in place. First thing is now we have to create the pool. So let us create a variable let pool. And the way we are going to do that is we are going to say await since this is an async function. So we are accompanying it with this await keyword and we are going to say SQL dot connect. Okay, and in that we just pass in the config that we declared above this one. Okay, so now it is going to wait for this thing to be established and it is then going to assign it to the variable pool. Now we are going to say await now pool dot we are going to work with request. Okay and then we want to write our query like this okay so this is the chain that we have to build and in this query we are going to write our query which is going to be let's say select all from users okay and once this is done we are going to store the result in a variable so let us give it a name let result one equal to this once this is done, we are going to say let's log out the result one to the console and let us close the connection. So to close the connection, we have to say SQL.close. Okay. In case there is an error, we just log out the error message to the console and again we close the connection like that. Okay. So we are good. So let us uh, save this and execute this file. So to execute this file, we have to say node and the name of the file. I hit enter. Okay, so I get my 
uh, records uh, as you could see in here so I just have to say record set and it is an array so if I just want to read any specific one I just say uh, results result one dot record set and if I just pass in here zero right so I uh, get the specific record right so you could see this is the first record okay now uh, if I want to write the prepared statement all right so if I just want to say where ID is equal to one okay I can do it like this I mean this is not a prepared statement uh, but yes so you get your result back but what if I want to uh, control this thing okay so I want to write the prepared statement so for that you just have to add one more thing in between request and query so you just have to say input okay so let me give it uh, the name ID and I also need to provide in the type of uh, this so the type of this is int okay and then I pass in the value so let me do this and now all I have to do uh, in here is where ID is equal to I have to change this to ID okay so I have to add this M percent and then whatever name that I have given in here okay so if I just save this and run it now okay so I get the respective record I keep on changing this value okay and I get my respective records okay now uh, we have seen select all from users we have seen select all from users where ID is equal to something and now the next thing that we have to do is we also have to execute the SP and that X SP takes in an input parameter okay so let me just uh, you know uh, create one more uh, variable so in here I just say So this is going to be let's say let result 2 and now this has to be because we uh, to execute the SP uh, what do we have in here we have this execute so they've tried to map this up so instead of query we just have to say execute okay and we have to provide in the name of the SP and the name of the SP is get user okay let's see that so we have get users all right so uh, now this is going to be result set 2 so let me just change this to result set 2 let me save it and run this again all right so we get our respective record let us change the value to something now so we set it to 3 and now we will see chris harris okay so this is how you can uh, work with async await and you can uh, work with prepared statement and stored procedures so let us comment this out if that concept is clear i mean we are pretty much going to use this again and again promise let's do the promise way uh, so we start with sql uh, then what did we do so we first created this connect okay so let us do that okay so this is going to give us the pool all right so we just say then and we get pool in here and we have to pass in the callback so this pool will become the argument of that callback function uh, we are going to say pool dot we are going to then create request i mean this is the standard step once you get the request you have the input all right so i'm skipping the select all from users let's concentrate on the prepared statement and on the uh, stored procedures okay and then you have the query thing okay now one more thing that we want to do is we want to return this and when we return this what is going to happen is we'll get one more then in here okay and in here we are going to get our result okay as an argument to the callback to this then all right so once uh, you you get this we just say uh, the same thing uh, that we said in here right like this and in case there is an error so you just log that out okay so error and we just again uh, copy this thing okay and we also need to close the connection okay so in here we got the results so we can close the connection and in the catch also we close the connection okay now in uh, input what do we want to do uh, again we want to do the same so I just want to pass it this value so I just write it here and my query would be the same this thing okay so like that 
this has to be result and not result to so let me run this right so it works for this particular id let me change it to three we should see chris harris now all right so yes it is working now let us do the same for uh, sp so i'm just commenting this out and in here it's very simple so you now know you have to say execute and you have to provide in the name of the stored procedure which is get user all right and uh, if i do three it is going to give me this chris harris so let us go for this uh, tom bellard so i just have to pass in two in here save it execute this again Okay, so this is also working. All right, so next one is callback. So for callback, we are again going to say SQL dot connect, and it takes in two arguments. First one is the config. Second one is the callback, and this callback is an argument error. So let us do that. So we say error like this. So if there is an error, we simply want to log it to the console so else we are going to say now we have to create the request object so i'm going to say new sql dot request this is the change this is what we have to do once you have this then you want to again chain it with input okay and in here you pass in those values so let us grab those values let us pick this All right and the next thing is we have that query okay so we say query and this time what we are going to do is we are first going to write the query that's going to be our first argument second would be the callback so let us copy the query so we just copy this query and the second argument is a callback which takes in uh, two arguments error and result okay and let me say if error all right just do this so let me copy this if error do this else we just say console log result dot record set and we close the connection okay and if there is an error here also we close this connection okay so we we are good in here so let me just save it and i need to comment this out run this okay so we get a harris quiz if i change the value to two we are going to get tom bellard okay so this one is also working now we have to do the same for stored procedures and uh, the logic would remain the same so let me take a copy of this come in this out come here and we just change this to execute and we have to pass in the name of the stored procedure which is get user save it run this again so we get tom bellard we change it to one this time and i execute this and i get john smith okay so we have covered all the different ways all right so let's use this concept and create an api quickly and i'm going to make use of this promise version so i just take a copy of it go to my app.js file and in here you see i'm making use of express all right and with the help of this we have created this app and then these are my routes and my route would be localhost 3000 api user and then i'm going to pass the id from the url itself so rather than hard coding because this far we have been hard coding the values now we are going to supply that from the url itself right so let me just paste the code uncomment this whole thing and let us use the uh, stored procedure version so we are good with this now this is a hard coded value so we have to replace it with request dot params dot id okay and since this would be the string value we have to convert that into integer so we say pass int and like that so it would get converted into this 
the other change we have to do is in here all right so rather than logging it to a console we just have to say uh, response dot status let's set the status to 200 and pass the json response and we just say result would be this result dot record set at the zero index so i think we are good now let me save this and to start the server we have to say node and the name of the file which is app.js let's hit enter so server is listening on port 3000 let's open this thing in browser so we say local host port 3000 forward slash api forward slash user forward slash one we hit enter we get the first record back we pass in two so we get the second record we pass in three we get the third record so yes this is how we can connect node.js with microsoft sql server so i hope you like that thank you so much